Woodworking season's upon us. If you don't know what woodworking season is, I explained it in a vlog a while back. It's the time of year when the greatest number of people are in their shops, according to surveys and retail data. It runs from around now to when the warm weather draws everybody back outside and woodworking gives way to gardening for a while. To kick off woodworking season, we have two special editions of our popular Cool Tools series. This one is full of some of my favorite inexpensive tools, and later this week we'll have another episode full of some of my favorite regular tools. All are things I personally use in my shop, often for a long time. If a sponsor is involved, we disclose it below the video. But my opinions are always mine, so you can take them or leave them. We have 10 cool tools today, all priced below 25 bucks. We'll be moving very quickly to fit them all in, so please check out the links below this video to learn more about any particular tool. A lot of these are really worth checking out. Now let's get started. When I first saw these combination drill bits, I thought, what the heck? It's a three-in-one drill bit that claims to drill a hole, tap it with threads, deburr, and countersink all in one motion. Now, I'm no idiot. I know a drill may be a high-speed tool, but a tap is a slow-speed tool. So don't expect to just burn threaded holes through steel plate at high speed. And don't be fooled by the hex end. These are not for cordless impact drivers. Use a variable speed drill and go slowly. You'll feel when the threading tapping portion engages and that's when you want to slow it down to a crawl or you might break it. You may even reverse a time or two to clear the shavings. And if you're boring through metal, use some lubricant. While these work great in soft metals such as aluminum and brass as well as hard plastics, I wouldn't count on them for mild steel, especially not in a drill. If you wanted to go through something harder, I would get rid of the power tool and turn them by hand and they're definitely not for stainless or hardened steels. Where they really shine in my shop is for hardwood. You can thread and tap holes for jigs or even knock down furniture joinery. The quarter inch size fits a standard hex or carriage bolt. They're fast, they're easy, they're cheap. I'll link to them below this video so you can check them out. The Dremel keyless chuck solved two frustrating problems for me. First was having to use a wrench every time I wanted to swap bits, which I hated doing. It may not sound like a big deal, but when you're power carving, you change bits very frequently. Going keyless is a much quicker and more convenient option. It also eliminated the problem I had when I reached for a bit, and I found that the shaft size was smaller than an eighth of an inch, which necessitated changing the jaws. Sometimes I thought I had an eighth inch shaft bit with me, and it ended up being smaller, and I didn't have the matching jaws with me. That's no longer an issue, because this chuck will fit anything between 1 32nd and 1 8th, even drill bits. It can be used with the Dremel, but it can also be used with some of the knockoff rotary tools, and it will go on the flex shafts and the right angle attachments. If you have a rotary tool, you should definitely check this thing out. I'll link to it below. If you're looking to speed up your sharpening game, you're probably trying to go freehand. And if you're trying to sharpen freehand, you're probably struggling, at least at first, to find and keep the proper angle especially with tools that have narrow bevels, such as knives and plain irons, because you can't feel those bevels like you can on a thicker tool, like a chisel. This little wedge is like training wheels on a bicycle. You choose the angle you need, put it on the stone, and use it to set the proper angle as you begin each stroke. This particular set comes in a two-pack. One has a magnet on the bottom to stick to diamond plates. The other has a rubber pad to help it stick to regular stones, but it doesn't stick that great. There is also another type that attaches to stones with a rubber band, and that holds a little bit better if you're not using diamond plates. But that version comes with more angles, but most of them are low angles, more for sharpening knives than woodworking tools. So I prefer the two-piece set, especially since I use diamond stones. You can use them to help you tilt your tool to the proper angle so you can lock your wrists in position. Then you come back to it with each stroke, or just periodically return to it to be sure your angle hasn't changed. These have been around in various forms for a long time, and they're a great way to train yourself to feel an angle, so that in time, you won't need the wedge at all. If you're looking to go jigless, you should definitely check them out at the link below. This high-tech hockey puck is called the Rollbot, and it is awesome. Not just because it will accurately measure things from short work pieces to entire buildings without the limits of a tape, but because it will do things no measuring tape of any length can. It will measure curvy or waved surfaces. It will measure irregular paths. It will calculate circumference. It will measure and calculate area. 
and it will even calculate board feet, making it handy on the job site and at the lumber yard. It glides smoothly, it's accurate to about a 32nd of an inch, it works in forward and reverse, and it has fractions, decimal, and metric scales, so everyone's satisfied. The robot isn't going to replace my ruler for very precise measurements, but there are a lot of tasks where it comes in really handy, such as measuring a wall or an oddly shaped object, and especially when calculating board feet at the lumber yard. I highly recommend you check it out at the link below. So these are called Gelinery Secure Nails Anti-Smashing Finger Joint Pliers for more safety, hammering nails easy to position, and keeping fingers safe. I'm guessing English is not this company's first language, but this is a good idea, and not just for people with fat fingers who can't drive a nail. Have you ever had to drive a nail in an awkward position? This little gizmo will extend your reach, ensuring that the nail is held perpendicular to the surface so it won't deflect to the side and bend if you misstrike. And it also works great for those tiny brads. You're not going to use this thing every time you drive a nail, but at under 10 bucks, it's worth keeping in the toolbox for those special situations when you do need it. I'll link to it below. I use sacrificial fence faces frequently when cutting rabbits, tenons, raised panels. You've seen them in lots of tutorials on our channel. And these handy little clamps are by far the handiest way to attach a fence to a fence. I've used different brands, but the Milescraft version seemed to be the best balance between quality and price. They're universal, meaning they will work with wide fences and narrow ones. And they can also be used to attach stop blocks on the router table or the miter saw, corner clamps for assembly, feather boards, all sorts of different things. Fence clamps are one of those tools folks don't know they need until they get a couple, and then they find themselves reaching for them all the time. I'll link to them below the video. If you make pens or other small turnings, you know how frustrating it can be to bore into end grain. Conventional drill bits don't always track well through the entire length of a blank. This bit solves many of those problems. For one thing, it features unique cutting tip geometry that's specifically designed for end grain. The parabolic flute design works much like an auger to clear the chips more efficiently so the bit tracks straighter and stays cooler without frequently withdrawing it during the cut as you must with a conventional bit. It's made from high quality M2 high speed steel for a much longer lifespan. They claim it will drill up to 1350 holes without sharpening and it's extra long. Fish Tools makes the best drill bits in the world, so it's no surprise that their pen drilling bits are revolutionary. You really should check them out at the link below this video. I don't know what's in the Wonder Slick Stick. They say it's an all-natural lubricant, but I'm not sure it's from this planet. Not only will it help keep your tools cooler while you grind, it will also keep soft metals from clogging and potentially ruining CBN wheels. You can put it on bandsaw blades to reduce binding and burning. Use it on your lathe tool rest for smoother cuts. And all I can say is try a dab on your sandpaper and see what happens. Don't worry, it won't affect your finish. That's what I mean about this being from another world. I don't understand it, but I've come to love it. You can get it at Wood Turner's Wonders. I'll link to it below. Maybe it's just me, but I sometimes have a hard time drilling a straight hole while keeping the bit plumb to the workpiece. When I can't use a drill press, I have taken to using this drill block. This inexpensive little tool is worth its weight in gold. It features six holes from an eighth inch up to a half inch, each lined with hardened steel for durability. There are non-slip feet on the bottom to help it stay put as you drill perfectly straight holes. There's also a V-groove on the bottom that makes it possible to drill into corners or even cylindrical objects. There's not much more to say about it. It's a lifesaver in certain situations and flat out handy to have in others. Check it out at the link below. I got one of these electric lighters a year ago because it looked awesome. Kind of like the electric cattle prod the guy used in Jurassic Park before he got eaten by the compies. It's rechargeable via USB. It seems to last a very long time between charges. And while I agree that nobody needs an electric lighter, a surprising number of people want an electric lighter to satisfy their pyromaniacal desires in the coolest way possible. It also works to light the pilot on your shop heater, start a fire in the wood stove, burn classified shop drawings, and light candles. I'll link to it below so you can check it out. That's it for this special edition of Cool Tools. In a couple of days, we'll have our regular edition featuring five regular tools I use in my shop. Don't forget to check out the links below. See you next time. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.